Hey there, ladies and gents. This is Sarah Beam from Team Bazinga. My teammates Matthew Newman and Iris Santos and myself have put together a video about the BCG Matrix for you all to enjoy. In our presentation, we'll discuss the following. What is the BCG Matrix? We'll discuss the product life cycle, who and where did the matrix come from, and we'll discuss an image of the matrix, the difference between stars, cash cows, question marks, and dogs, the practical use of growth, market growth, market share, the limitations of the BCG matrix, and finally, the bibliography. So first, we'll talk about what is the BCG matrix and we'll answer that question. The BCG matrix is also known as the growth share matrix. It is the most well-known portfolio management tool that is based on the product lifecycle theory. It provides a graphic represent representation for an organization to examine different businesses and its portfolio on the basis of their related market share and industry growth rates. In other words, it is a comparative analysis of business potential and the evaluation of the environment. The BCG matrix method can be used to determine what priorities should be given in the product portfolio of a business unit. This helps the company allocate resources and is used as an analytical tool in brand marketing, product management, strategic management, and portfolio analysis. The product life cycle is a business analysis that attempts to identify a set of common stages in the life of commercial products. For example, introduction, promotion, growth, maturity, and decline. As a particular industry matures and its growth slows, all business units become either cash cows or dogs. The natural cycle for most business units is that they start as question marks, then turn into stars. Eventually, the market stops growing, thus the business unit becomes a cash cow. At the end of the cycle, the cash cow turns into a dog. So who created the BCG matrix and where did it come from? The chart was created by Bruce Henderson for the Boston Consulting Group in the 1970s to help corporations with analyzing their business units or product lines. The overall goal was to help corporate analysts decide which of their business units to fund and how much, and which units to sell. Managers were supposed to gain perspective from this analysis that allowed them to plan with confidence to use money generated by the cash cows to fund the stars and possibly the question marks. Only a diversified company with a balanced portfolio can use its strengths to truly capitalize on its growth opportunities. This balanced portfolio has stars whose high share and high growth assure the future, cash cows that supply funds for that future growth, and question marks to be converted into stars with the added funds. Stars are units with a high market share in a fast-growing industry. The hope is that stars become the next cash cows. Sustaining the business unit's market's leadership may require extra cash, but this is worthwhile if that's what it takes for the unit to remain a leader. When growth slows, if they have been able to maintain their category leadership, stars become cash cows, or else they become dogs due to low relative market share. Cash cows are units with high market share in a slow-growing industry. These are often units that generate more cash than they, take to, than they take to run. In other words, they are very profitable. Cash cows should be milked, extracting the profits and investing as little cash as possible. Dogs, or more charitably called pets, are units with low market share in a mature, slow-growing industry. Dogs neither generate nor consume a large amount of cash, though owing a break-even unit pr provides the social benefit of providing jobs and possible interactions that assist other business units. From an accounting point of view, such a unit is worthless, not generating any cash for the company. Simply put, dogs are cash traps because of the money tied up in a business that has little potential. 
Such businesses are candidates for potential sale. Question marks, also known as problem children, are growing rapidly and thus consume large amounts of cash, but because they have low market shares, they do not generate much cash. A question mark has the potential to gain market share and become a star, and eventually a cash cow when the market growth slows. If the question mark does not succeed in becoming the market leader, then after perhaps years of cash consumption, it will degenerate into a dog when the market growth declines. Question marks must be analyzed carefully in order to determine whether they are worth the investment required to grow market share. For each product or service, the area of the circle represents the value of its sales. The growth share matrix thus offers a map of the organization's product or service strengths and weaknesses, at least in terms of current profitability as well as the likely cash flows. The market growth rate says more about the brand position than just its cash flow. It is a good indicator of that market's strength of its future potential and also of its attractiveness to future competitors. It can also be used in growth analysis. Rapidly growing and rapidly growing markets are what organizations strive for, but as we have seen, the penalty is that they are usually net cash users. They require investment. The reason for this is often because the growth is being bought by the high investment and the reasonable expectation that a high market share will eventually turn into a sound investment in future profits. The theory behind the matrix assumes, therefore, that a higher growth rate is indicative of accompanying demands on investment. What exactly is a high relative share is a matter of some debate. One example is the rule of 1, 2, 3. The rule of 123 states that the most stable position is for the brand leader to have a share double that of the second brand and triple that of the third. Brand leaders in this position tend to be very stable and profitable. Market share generally indicates likely cash generation because the higher the share, the more cash will be generated. As a result of economies of scale, it is assumed that these earnings will grow faster the higher the share. The exact measure is the brand's share relative to its largest competitor. Thus, if the brand had a share of 20% and the largest competitor had the same, the ratio would be 1 to 1. If the largest competitor had a share of 60%, however, the ratio would be 1 to 3, implying that the organization's brand was in a relatively weak position. If the largest competitor only had a share of 5%, the ratio would be 4 to 1, implying that the brand owned was in a relatively strong position which might be reflected in profits and cash flows. If this technique is used in practice, this scale is logarithmic, not linear. The reason for choosing relative market share rather than just profits is that it carries more information than just cash flow. It shows where the brand is positioned against its main competitors and indicates where it might be likely to go in the future. It can also show what type of marketing activities might be expected to be effective. While the BCG matrix helps companies properly allocate resources, there are some limitations. These limitations are neglects effects of synergy between business units. This four-celled approach is considered as to be too simplistic. Its lack of detail could miss certain key points. High market share is not the only success factor. High market share does not always lead to high profits. There are high costs also involved with high market share. Dogs can also earn more cash than cash cows. At times, dogs may help other businesses in gaining competitive advantage. They can earn even more than cash cows, and sometimes. There is no clear definition of what constitutes a market. The BCG matrix only uses two dimensions, market share and growth rate, and a business with low market share can also be profitable. Thanks for watching. Bazinga!